He's talking about the family of Rachel Entwistle yesterday, making their first public statement since Rachel Entwistle and her infant daughter were found shot to death in their home a week ago. The woman's husband, British citizen Neil Entwistle, has been in England since around the time of their deaths. Joining us now, Vito Colucci, a former Stamford, Connecticut police detective who is now a private investigator, and Charles Moray, an international law expert. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Charles, it's my understanding that the four Boston detectives who had gone to England to talk to Neil Entwistle are back in Boston now. That doesn't seem like uh, a whole lot of time spent there. No, it's, and it's my understanding that um, uh, Mr. Antwistle went to the embassy for the interview and then refused to answer any questions from the detectives and returned to his home. All right, so under, under international law, I presume he has that right, huh? He, he does. He, um, he, he, he would have that right here in the U.S. He doesn't have to answer questions. It's just that there, they can't arrest him. They have to use the extradition treaty to have him removed from England and then arrest him when he arrives here in the United States. Vito, they're still calling him a person of interest. I would think by this point he would be a suspect. No, you can't use that term. He's, he's the poster boy for a person of interest. The problem with calling him a suspect and down the road you arrest somebody else, a defense attorney have a field day with that. Well, wasn't he a suspect? Wasn't he named on television a suspect? You know, they got to come back. They got to try to put together an arrest warrant based solely on all circumstantial evidence. They better have a preponderance of that, too, when they bring it to a judge to have it signed. So you have a lot of problems with this case. And not only that, if he is arrested down the road, don't forget, John, how about the police officers and the neighbors and friends that walked into this house, walked into a bedroom, and didn't see any bodies in the bed? So you got a lot of different problems going on in this case. Right. Well, they also have the problem that, uh, you know, if, if, if he does become a suspect or, you know, something beyond person of interest, it would not be unusual to find his fingerprints all over that house because he lived there. Oh, yeah, that, that you just eliminate right away. I mean, uh, you're not even looking for his DNA. The bodies are placed, almost placed nicely in this bed. You know, he goes to England, doesn't make any phone calls back home. I'd be very surprised if he shows up for the funeral. I think his father has some pull in England, probably hooked him up with a good attorney. Uh, all that bit we were hearing last week that he was cooperating, I think that suddenly stopped in its tracks, John. Charles, would you uh, expect there to be a great deal of difficulty extraditing him from England? if the uh, Boston authorities do decide to charge him? Well, it, it's, it's hard to tell at this point, but it is an additional process that the prosecutors here will have to go through. They'll have to file a formal charge or request under the treaty. They'll have to have a, a basically a mini trial in the magistrate court in London. That, that process is reviewed by the Home Secretary, and that can be appealed. It can, the, uh, the defendant can appeal it to the high court in, in England, this can take a long time. If he were being extradited to a, uh, if he were to be extradited to a death penalty state, England could just flat out block it, right? It could, or, or, or do something a little less than that. They can say, yes, we will return him, but you cannot execute him. No matter what the ruling is after the trial, he cannot be executed. Vito, what do you make of the fact that those four detectives uh, went there and, and now they're back? I mean, is there no other information they can gather in England if, uh, if he doesn't want to talk to them? Definitely not, John. If, if he doesn't want to talk to them there, I think they probably went with the presumption that he was going to cooperate. I think by the time they got there, they were uh, quite surprised as to the stance he took. So they have a lot of work to do. They got to hope and pray when they bring their rest warrant application to a judge that they have enough for a judge to sign this. I don't know. It's like a 50-50 shot, John. Vito Colucci and Charles Morey. Thank you both. Thank you.